Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Reese, give me a face. Uh, hello, I'm just sitting down. Hi. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I think the chair's higher. Now give us a face, Reese. Ah! Okay, great. Let's talk about hot news, which first up, <sighs> Rockstar. <laughs> we don't need another game launcher. I don't, uh, okay. So let's give you the skinny. Rockstar yesterday unveiled its game launcher, which you can play, uh, launch all of your favorite Rockstar games from there, such as Grand Theft Auto V, LA Noir. Uh, what else? I don't care what else they have because those are, uh, anyways. So it appears, at least from speculation, that this is going to be in anticipation of the Red Dead Redemption 2 PC launch. So they're getting their own launcher ready for that. And it's cool, and to incentivize people to do it, they are giving away Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for free for when you sign up for the Rockstar Launcher. But it's not just a, uh, hey, come and get the sweet little candy on our palm. It's a, you will come over here and eat our candy or else because apparently now Rockstar Games cannot be launched without having the Rockstar Game Launcher installed. So if you had Grand Theft Auto V on Steam, say goodbye to the fact of just hitting play and it loading. No, now you need the Rockstar Game Launcher to load first and before you can actually freaking play the game on Steam. This is very similar to what Ubisoft has done with their Uplay games with getting like Far Cry or Assassin's Creed on Steam. You still need Uplay in order to use it, but Steam can launch it for you. The only thing that I'm hoping is that GOG 2.0 can actually handle this so that everybody switches over to GOG 2.0. It's a synchronized launcher for everything that you have, and we just leave all these different applications behind. That's what we need. No one needs 50 million launchers. Unless you have 50 million hands. I don't. Do you want? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Great. And then speaking of game launchers, Steam is finally rolling out their library beta to everybody in case you're interested. You can go onto your Steam application and sign up for it if you so like. Uh, they're revamping everything, huge new UI changes. So if you'd like to check it out for yourself personally, see if you like it. It's gonna be an inevitable rollout, I'm sure at some point. Go check it out over on Steam. But you know what's not gonna be an inevitable rollout? Some stuff for Anthem. Reese, give us the lowdown on what BioWare's doing. Yeah, no, so it's no secret that Anthem's had a bit of a rough start. Garbage. Super garbage. <laughs> so yeah, no, still grindy. You're just a Destiny fanboy. Oh, straight up. No, like this is like Destiny, but bad. Okay. <laughs> but they haven't given up on Anthem just yet. So after what they would say was an all right increase in player engagements, uh, the idea of second and third acts is just being completely scrapped. What was the concept behind second and third acts? Like they would have one big event every season roughly, like this, the last one was their Cataclysm event. And people were just like, this is boring. You know, we did the stuff, now what, what do we do now? So like they're, they're completely rethinking it. They're gonna go more seasonal and have multiple little events happening throughout the, the entire season as opposed to just one big giant poopy Thing. That makes a lot of sense. I, I, I'd prefer it, honestly. Like, they, they got to try everything to get this thing back on track. Because, yeah, this is the yikes of the game world. Good. Giant yikes from Anthem, which came out from Bioware. Speaking of Bioware, I'm good at segues. I set that up for myself. Swing and a miss. Uh, former Bioware writer is setting up a new studio. Reese, what's, what's that all about? Yeah, so David Gator, he was a writer on a couple of the old Bioware games, like the, the first two Dragon Age games, Knights of the Old Republic. Back when the Bioware was actually good? Yes. Okay. Uh, he's setting up his own studio in Australia called Summerfall Studios. Like there's no real details out there besides like the name and the fact that they're gonna be at PAX Australia. Uh, they'll also be launching a Kickstarter when they're there to f try and fund their first new game. Like they're promising a illustrated character driven adventure. And that's about all we know. Fantastic. Considering the pedigree, might be okay, but... Um, we'll see where it goes. Yes. I mean, if he left Bioware because he recognized where it was going, then that would be totally fine. But speaking of Summerfall Studios, in Australia, do they fall up? Yes. Okay. Even though we're in the hum Southern Hemisphere as well? Okay, and then in case you're interested in The Surge 2, which is coming out September 24th, there is a new gameplay trailer that just dropped, so you can go peep that in case you want to see what the game is going to look like. My guess is The Surge with new content. 
Wow. Who would have thought? And then Borderlands 3 continues to have a little bit of uh, hiccups and oopsies here and there, which this time it's due to uh, PC players having their cloud saves wiped with a ton of people advocating for you to not turn on your cloud saves, including big people from like IGN and like other streamers and like notable people have had their seven to 10 hours in the game completely wiped with no way of recouping it at this point. Uh, 2K and Gearbox are working on this at this point. It should be fixed sometime soon, but in case you have cloud saves and your game isn't already wiped, turn that crap off in local save, my friend, or always keep a local backup. No, that's too much. It's too much to copy your local backup to another folder every single time you're done with the game. No, screw that. I would never do that personally. Automate a script. Just every time you close that's the game. That's not a bad idea. Reese has ideas. Good idea, Reese. <laughs> Speaking of good idea, if you like Call of Duty, the Modern Warfare beta, which was exclusive to the PlayStation 4 this previous weekend, is now coming out on all of the platforms this coming weekend. So if you want to play Modern Warfare this weekend, you can try it out for beta. Do it. And the race, fill my head with cup news. You want some cup news? I want head cup news. <laughs> I'll give you some head cup. Uh, yeah, so Cuphead's the first video game soundtrack to ever hit number one on the Billboard's jazz charts. Congratulations. Like, you know, video game soundtracks, I, I listen to them. Like, I've never listened to the Cuphead soundtrack. It's really good. I didn't realize it was jazz. No, it, it goes with the whole like classic theme. Like, you know, it's got that like old Disney cartoon vibe, you know. Okay, that makes Everyone's sense. Everyone's bouncing. It's that jazz kind of vibe. Uh, yeah, so it held the spot for like a week. Fantastic. Just a week before being dethroned by Miles Davis, you know, okay. King of Jazz. Well, it makes sense. I mean, video games do cause violence. Yeah, so, so they had to take it down. Miles Davis up there, games that cause shootings in Walmarts go down. It's down. Speaking of going down, Fortnite is apparently going to be adding Area 51 raid skins. And in case you're not familiar with the gigantic meme, which is storming Area 51, running like Naruto, they can't stop all of us. That's taking place this coming Friday, September 20th, and Fortnite is gonna have skins to commemorate the event. Are you actually going to this? If anybody in the audience is actually going to this, let us know down in the comments. Otherwise, it's just a great meme. And it got a little bit of uh, life breathed into it with the new memes, which is like uh, me, me coming out of Area 51 with the bad music from Persona 5, Area 51 guard wondering why I'm leaving empty handed. There's a bunch of new leaving Area 51 memes. So hopefully the meme's not dead but it will be this weekend. That's what I'm hoping for. And then League of Legends actually gave some announcements regarding its numbers for the first time in a while because it's going to be celebrating its 10th anniversary. And what they stated, which Steam games and every other game on the face of the planet, hold your butt cheeks. They average 8 million concurrent daily players. Concurrent 8 million. That's not the total number during the day. Yeah. The total number during the day would have to be over 10 million. 8 million at peak every single day. Obviously, part of this is due to the influx of people playing the game due to team fight tactics and the new auto chess game that they've rolled out. But Riot Games, League of Legends, still one of the most popular games in the world 10 years later. That, that's quite impressive, actually. Impressed? Dang. And then speaking of impressive, you wanna impress your friends with your slick kick flips and your great skating abilities? Well, there's a new game coming out called Session, which is the uh, spiritual successor to the, was it Skate series? Yeah. So the reviews are coming out and basically Session is like, let me, let me paint you an analogy. With racing games, you have Need for Speed, where you just drive around all the freaking time and make really cool stunts and zzz, dra draft and all, <laughs> that's how I make it. And then you have Gran Turismo, which is the ultimate driving simulator. Okay, Need for Speed is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Session is Gran Turismo. Apparently, both analog sticks control how your character moves in the game. So it's very tedious. And if you want a realistic skating game, Session's gonna be for you. If you want to trick out like you did in Tony Hawk's Underground back in the day, uh, keep crying. Speaking of crying, get, people on Mixer are gonna be crying because they're now rolling out ads for both first party and partnered content. So any Microsoft streams that happen on Mixer will now have ads as well as Mixer partners will have ads. And the only way to negate that is to get their premium 
Pro subscription, which was rolled out for free for the first two months to anybody who wanted to subscribe to Ninja. So you wouldn't get ads there, but now it's coming and it, ads are everywhere. And you know what else is everywhere? Hobbits, because they're going to Isengard. Well, apparently it's been announced that the Lord of the Rings TV series that's supposed to be coming to Amazon is going to be filmed in none other than New Zealand. So yes, hearkening back to the roots of the original Peter Jackson trilogy, New Zealand is the best place for that to happen. And then we finally got more news about NBC's streaming service. They're gonna be calling it Peacock. No. Peacock. No. Peacock. <laughs> Depending on where you put the emphasis in the word, it can sound great or it can sound terrible. Obviously, NBC has that like rainbow logo and it is a peacock. And so that's why they're calling them that. It's gonna be dropping in April, 2020. They announced, obviously, they're gonna have all of the NBC titles, such as The Office, dropping there. But then they're also going to be rebooting Battlestar Galactica and doing a sequel to Save by the Bell where Zach Norris is governor and then Elizabeth Berkley and Mario Lopez are coming back to the high school. What? Nobody wants this. Nobody, nobody wants this. Give me original Save by the Bell, I'll watch that. Nobody's asking for reboots of this thing. Maybe Battlestar Galactica fans, that makes sense. But I mean, Save by the Bell sequel? Who? Speaking of sequels, Reese. Well, technically not a sequel. Shut up. Uh, DC just dropped the poster for the new Birds of Prey movie, which is coming out, what, February 2020? Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's being touted as a, a standalone film rather than a, a follow-up to like Suicide Squad, which was where you first saw Margot Robbie as, you know, Harley Quinn. Okay. So like they're, they're taking a different direction of this. I, it's almost like a reboot within the same character. With the same person playing? Yeah. Okay. I, same with like how they're, they're redoing Suicide Squad. It's a reboot. Technique. Wait, they're redoing Suicide it's Squad? It's supposedly a, a reboot. I know. <sighs> Uh, How do you reboot something that came out like two years ago? It was just because it was so bad. It oh my gosh. It. it deserves to actually never be made. Oh but my yeah. gosh. James Gunn, save us, please. Please. Okay, well, saving me is what the Phantom Thieves did to my heart. I had to change your heart. And you will too if you go to Japan to see the Persona 5 stage play that's going to be coming out towards the end of the year. Apparently, this is not the first time that Atlas has licensed its games to stage plays. Persona 3 and 4 both got stage plays and Persona 5 is going to have it with character photos coming out for the actors who are going to be playing the people in the, the, the play. So that's there. And apparently it only goes through the first palace of the game. So it's potentially going to be that they could have a sequel to the play just covering each different palace that goes into Persona 5 or they could just be doing one and done. Speaking of one and done, pooping. <laughs> yeah, okay, cause somebody uh, over on Reddit posted a video where they made an entire digestive system model in Minecraft and you can just see it go and it took them 30 hours with complete muscles, contracting fluid going down to the anals. Cool, great job, barely got full marks. Good stuff, bro. Speaking of good stuff, I'm gonna end this episode of Hot News there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Race, give, race, race, give us a fish. Okay, great. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on our hot news. I'm Brett, that's Reese, goodbye.